hey guys in this video I am going to cover Amazon storage solutions the first one is Amazon S3 or Amazon simple storage service and the second one which has been recently launched that is called Amazon Glacier now first let's talk about Amazon S3 and see what is Amazon S3 and how it helps in uh, storing your data and what are the additional advantages that you can take out of that Amazon S3 is a storage for internet whatever you store on Amazon S3 bucket is highly reliable and scalable there is no such limit how much data that you can put on the Amazon S3 bucket so the thing is that really helps in scaling up your environment let's say you start with 10 MB and end of the you can say six months or so you start getting one terabytes of data uh, coming from your users and you're uploading that on your S3 bucket that is very much supported by Amazon so at the max it supports up to five terabytes by default but if you want more storage you can write that to Amazon and you'll get more storage there is no such limit for that and what what are the advantages of using S3 the first thing is you can save your static data on the S3 now for example images and all that stuff that you want to use in your website you can save that stuff on S3 and access access those images and videos directly from S3 within your code secondly it actually allows you to host a fully static website as well so if you have a HTML based website with few images and few CSS you can straight away host that website on Amazon S3 and add the C name for that in your DNS and you are good to go you don't need anything else to run your website another thing is that it integrates with other Amazon services also for example for notifications it integrates with SNS uh, for for content delivery network it integrates with CloudFront so it is very easy to integrate with other services and again it's cost effective you have to pay what you use so before you actually start storing data on S3 you have to create a container which is called bucket so here you have to specify the region where you want to create the bucket and the bucket name let's say so this bucket name should be unique my first bucket one two one two and create so as you can see here your bucket has been created and on the right side you can see the properties for your bucket this is the name of your bucket and this is the region where it got created and this is the owner here you specify some of the permissions. so this is the my admin account and I have got all the permissions who can access my account and moreover I can add more permissions here for example if I want everyone to list the contents I can do so there is also a bucket policy that we can actually set up, set up here but before we talk about this thing we need to talk several other things and we will come back to this thing later on so as I said earlier you can actually host your static website here so this is the dynamically generated domain name or endpoint that's been provided to you by Amazon S3 bucket and you can enable your website hosting and what will be the default document that will open when this link will be hit let's say index.html and what will the error document let's say error.html and save this thing logging so whoever is going to access your website it actually creates access logs so these are the industry standard w3c compliant logs which you can analyze with any other industry standard log analyzer if you want to keep the logs enabled you can enable it and you can save it in any other bucket you can save it in the same bucket or if you have multiple buckets you can save it in that bucket also so just give the prefix whatever so that those logs will be generated and saved under logs folder save this thing 
and notifications so here we have to use the Amazon SNS service so we'll talk about SNS later on and then we'll see how you can actually use SNS service to send the notifications now this is the life cycle this integrates really well with Amazon Galatia so another thing is if you want your requester pays let's say the one who is accessing your bucket that guy pays you rather than you paying to Amazon you enable this thing but for this you have to disable the anonymous user accessibility to your user then you really have to have the Amazon accounts of other users those needs to be filled in those needs to be integrated with your bucket so that those Amazon accounts will be charged and not your Amazon account will be charged and versioning here is it is very much similar to the any other version control software that we use for example subversion or git so it it keeps the versioning of your data at regular intervals so that even if you accidentally delete any file you can retrieve that from the older versions so there was the all about uh, bucket properties how you can set up various parameters as per your requirement now let's click on this bucket and as you can see this bucket is empty as of now let's try to upload something add files let's upload this thing and start upload so as you can see this management console enables us to upload the data or upload the files it was not the case earlier and most of the times you are not going to use this thing to upload the data the one other thing that you can use to access your s3 bucket is cloudberry explorer so you need to configure this thing if you click on file here it says Amazon s3 account and you can create new account fill in your display name access key and secret key every account comes with access key and secret key and then your account will be created just like these two accounts that you can see here and as you can see my first bucket 1212 is the one which I just created and it also contains webserver.ppk now let's upload an HTML file and see how that web hosting thing is working or not so upload one test.html file to the bucket and as you may recall we have enabled the web hosting properties so this file has been uploaded using Cloudberry Explorer for Amazon test.html and go back here and copy this link and give the name of your file so as you can see this file has been rendered and displayed on your screen so similarly you can host your entire static website here and if you don't want to use this thing you can take up your own domain you register your own domain and make the CNAME entry for this particular domain so that you access with your own custom DNS rather than the one generated by S3 now let's go back to your virtual server once again so I'll show you a command line utility that you can use to access your S3 bucket click on instance and copy your public IP switch to root user yum install s3 cmd so it installs the s3 cmd utility which you can use to access your amazon s3 buckets now before you actually start using it you need to configure this utility 
start with dash dash configure and here you have to specify your access key now where to get your access key under your name click on security credentials here you can get this access key tab expand this thing and again click on the legacy security credentials link it may ask for you to sign in again this provide the master account information and here you can see this is your access ID let's fill in there and this is your secret access key copy this thing and fill in there you need an encryption password no I don't need and just hit the enter enter just keep the default values save this thing now as you can see here your access key and secret access key work fine now it's time to use this thing s3cmd and then type ls here you can see my first bucket this is the name of the bucket which I created so you can see this bucket let's create a file take one and s3 cmd put take one two So this is how you can upload your files to the S3 bucket and if you want to list the content of your S3 bucket you can specify ls and after ls specify your bucket name. So take one this is what I have uploaded just now test.html was already there and this is the one which we uploaded using the Amazon console. Now if you want to create one more bucket s3 cmd type mb and here you have to specify my second bucket 12 12 again list it and here you can see two buckets so for all the commands just type help and you'll see all these commands that are possible that you can use with your s3 cmd utility you can use this utility inside your code also or you can consume the apis in your code so that you can upload or download the data to and from amazon s3 buckets so let's go to s3 again and see if the newly created bucket can be seen there or not so this is the my second bucket this is the my first bucket so this is how you can actually create buckets, delete buckets, upload content, set some permissions, enable the website hosting property, enable logging. Thanks for watching guys and stay tuned for more videos.